The true light, the one that enlightens every man, has descended and has come among his people. Behold the words are fulfilled, the sacred scriptures have been accomplished and fulfilled again. Now, those who have welcomed the light descended, so that many might become once again sons, true sons, and receive the grace of him who is the only begotten of the Father, live and are here, in front of this little cradle, second and last grotto there will be no other ever again said Jesus to his maiden. Come and hasten to this cradle. Cradle of fulfillment, cradle where the light again has descended to dwell. Here is the infant Jesus, descended, born, now alive among his people, to bring everyone to contemplate God in spirit and life. God is spirit and the true worshippers, will worship him in spirit and life. Everything is fulfilled and here is the joy, that today we live in this holy Christmas. Christmas, the birth of Jesus, the rebirth of the children of Jesus, who are alive in Jesus, reborn, and live to bring to all this announcement of salvation, this announcement of rebirth. Everything is fulfilled and all is lived, so that every word heard, can be center of our heart, put into practice, and made known to all those in the world, now as then, are in search of this light and grope in the dark, grope in the darkness, that envelopes the hearts of so many and have extinguished in the hearts of so many the joy of life. Be you like the shepherds, who rushed listening to that man, to worship the infant, who had been born. Go, so that many can come and come here and recognize that child, born, born, to give life, so that so many may have it, have it in abundance. Go, through the ways of this world, so that all those who are animated by good will, all those who are in search of the king. Where is the king? We saw his star rise. They can come, follow and continue to follow the star, Mary, star of the path of God's children and meet the king, born, to give life. That good and holy king, who is essence and substance of the Father. Here is Christmas. The Christmas that today we want to live by putting back at the center what the Father has given us, his and our king. He was born in a family, brought up by a mother and a father, Mary and Saint Joseph. Here it is that in this Christmas, at the center we have to put the family, the value of family, so that all can understand the importance of the family, put it back in the center and behave like Mary, here is the example for every woman. And Joseph, here is the example for every man, for every father and in doing so, every young person, every son, will look to the baby Jesus, to be able to grow in age, in wisdom and grace. And so the family returns to being center, just as in these days, in the Christmas season we do, right and holy to meet and gather as a family, to push away disagreements, to drive away misunderstandings, to be born again and be reconciled where possible, with all. Here is the Christmas of God's children, of the Christians, called to be good. Good, not as the world intends, not humanly good, but good as Christ asks to be. Here are the Christians who want to be true men, good, righteous, generous, to then manifest oneself and be recognized as authentic Christians. This is what I ask all of you, children of this mother church, to be able to manifest yourselves and in the family, domestic church and in the family universal church, so that it can be true Christmas. A Christmas of rebirth, where brotherhood returns to be center. Where love to God and neighbor returns to be center. Where the love for life, returns to be center. Here is the one who is good, that gives life, who is born, who wants to bring us all back to love that which the Father, in turn gave, a love for the family and love for life, the greatest and most sacred gift that the Father, gave to men. Here is the Christmas of the Sons of Christ, who put back at the center, the two fundamental pillars that hold up this society. A society that asks for peace. Asks God for the gift of peace. But peace cannot be a gift, just as salvation, is a daily achievement peace, which must be won through sacrifice and goodwill. To so many men who govern the nations in this world, who ask for peace, I ask today, how can you ask God for peace, 
if you legislate against God's thinking and against His will. If you enact laws that go against the sacredness of the family and the sacredness of life, how can one ask God, if one makes war on Him, by trampling on His original thought? How can one ask for peace, if one is not at peace with God? Make peace with God, with His teachings, then peace can be stable in He who has descended, was born, to bring peace, the King of peace, to bring life, the King of life. One cannot in words, show that one wants peace, that one asks for peace, when in fact in words, one says one thing, but in deeds one does other, for his own interests, economic, national. How can one, ask for peace, when there are entire peoples, nations, who in the name of God kill and take life away, take freedom, from so many young women and men, in the name of God? That is not the true God who descended and was born, to bring us peace. God commanded don't kill. Never in God's name one can kill and take life, take away freedom. And the world stands and watches, in the face of massacres and slaughters, of especially women, who do not accept being crushed, rightly. The greatest fault lies in he, who in the name of Christ went to these places to sign covenants of human brotherhood, so called, affirming that in the plurality of religions, there is a wise will of God. Grave and very serious, this dastardly act of who, who in the name of Christ, has deceived the consciences of Christians and of God's children. One is the religion that the Father has given in His Son, whom we celebrate today, on the day of His birth, the Christian religion. Others affirm other. The Christian religion is a religion of life, not of death. Christ came to give us life, not to take it away from us. He gave us His life, so that we would have it. This is what is needed if we want to achieve peace, on an intimate, family level, keeping God's law, His commandments and all the more so at the global level. Then there will be peace and it will be stable on this earth, in Christ, with Christ and for Christ. Because this is the will of the Father, for this today, to everyone and especially to you beloved young people, again I say, go into the streets of this world and proclaim that the scriptures have been fulfilled and that here Jesus again has descended to give us peace, whoever wants peace, come here, whoever wants love, come here, whoever wants freedom, come here. To meet the God of peace, the God of love, the God of freedom, who descended, was born, to be able to embrace and welcome all those who, overcoming doubts, overcoming the darkness and fog, that envelopes nations and many hearts, comes to worship and adore, he who is born, the King, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. A young man in recent days wishing me every good for this Christmas, sent me a sentence that struck me and that today I want to share with you. A phrase from a great saint, who writes, do not accept anything as truth that is devoid of love and do not accept anything as love that is devoid of truth. One without the other becomes a destructive lie. It is so, never accept anything as truth that does not contain love, love and truth are one. Love, truth and freedom. This is what our God came to bring us and freely He brought it to us and we, you, freely bring it to all. Here is my wish for this Christmas, so that no one feels alone and abandoned. You dear brothers who are sick, bedridden, imprisoned, discarded, by a world that is interested in something else, you are not alone. Here in this cradle you will find a family always ready to welcome you. In order to be able to manifest to you love, love, love. That love towards God and towards our neighbor, that God has taught us and which this maiden, by welcoming him in her heart, has shown us, with her example of life. A living example, that guides us, today as yesterday, so that it may be Christmas in everyone's heart. This again is my wish for you, for your families, for your loved ones, that they may all be at peace with Jesus and so ask Jesus for every grace, corporal and spiritual, so that the God of peace, the God of love, the God of truth, the God of freedom, the God of life, today on this feast, his and our feast, 
may grant us, by giving us every grace. And so be it.